Yeah, well, you're absolutely dominating on TikTok and it's all sort of come off the back of the the mantra, the hashtag, the sort of movement, train like an athlete. Yeah. Can you talk us through what train like an athlete means? For sure. So I think we are probably 10 years behind Australian strength and conditioning um, from like the Americas, uh, UK, all that sort of stuff. So yeah. basically the way that, that I see it is we're getting a crazy amount of injuries still in sport, especially in AFL, what my, my biggest love um, for the mm. sport. And I'm like, how can we combat this and change it? And it's because we're not training to co- like to get used to like getting hit um, when we jump, when we land, you know, we don't, we don't practice landing mechanics. We don't practice how to jump, how to land safely, all that sort of stuff that um, is kind of really obvious to me, but not obvious to other people for some reason. I don't know why. So that's kind of how I got into it. Increased performance by training like an athlete, you sprint faster, you jump higher, you know, you got better balance, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, and yeah, hopefully decrease your injuries as well. So how did you get into the train like an athlete side of fitness? It's, it's a weird one. I've always been re- – like I've got my degree in sports journalism, um, which is a weird one. But when I was at uni, I was, I was always studying, you know, sports, fitness and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I, I guess it's always been a passion of mine, the sporting um, side of fitness and, and how – and I've kind of started off training like a bodybuilder and I broke my leg really, really badly when I was like 16 or 17. And that's when I changed my mindset. I was like, I'm not training the way that I should be. Uh, I didn't. I, I tried to take a hanger. Think I was, you know, all this. Get and me uh, Yeah. There was. How do you do that? And uh, <laughs> landed and just like completely snapped my legs. I was like, bloody hell! Oh what God. am I doing, mate? Like I didn't get taught how to do this. You know, I'm, you know, I'm doing squats and deadlifts and stuff, and not really teaching myself how to jump and land and, and run, and move uh, effectively. So that was kind of what changed my mindset. Was like, I really need to start change the way that I train. And then I don't want the same young kids to make the same mistakes that I did kind of thing. Yep. So I want them to learn very early, this is how you should be training, and then you won't have to go through a year of injuries, um, hopefully, fingers crossed. So how has the um, the sort of response been to the train like an athlete TikToks? Because I've yeah. seen a few TikToks <laughs> where American fitness influencers will just rip you to shreds yeah. about the way that you train and the way that you promote training like an athlete. So how do you take some of the responses and how do you take some of the criticism and stuff that comes towards your TikTok oh, online? Mate. I don't know. Like, uh, I was lucky enough that I went to a school where we kind of all took the mickey out of each other a little bit. My dad always take, you know, we kind of have banter and stuff. So I'm pretty used. To, I've got a reasonably thick skin, I guess, with with how things go. And um, and yeah, I, I think that you know, if you're going to put that you know content out there, and you know, you're going to stand by it, you're going to have to be ready for the response that's going to come. And I always knew, you know, when I go out and play footy, that I'm going to get a fair bit of stick uh, from the opposition and, and mm. from the crowd and supporters. So I, uh, I I ready myself for it. And and you probably know better than anyone that I love I love it. I really thrive off it. So you it's, do. Yeah, yeah, it's something that I I invite. I'm like, give it to me because I you know I got to prove myself. It motivates you. Hundred percent. Like you saw me the other day, we go for a kick. Like I'll I'll. But yeah, all the boys I'll, are getting into you. <laughs> boys are really getting into me, but yeah. um, that's yeah, that's Saturday for me. I love it. So yeah, give it and um and it's all a bit of fun and games. Yeah, like I laugh it off when crowd. And supporters are doing it. I'll just like turn around, have a laugh with them, and say, "You know, good on you, legends!" Like, yeah. and then they're the same people that come up to you after the game and say, "Can we take a photo?" Kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like ah, it's all a bit of fun and games. It's footy, mate. You got to have a bit of thick skin for it. Yeah, I think for you in particular, you take it really well in your stride. Like, mm. and it might just be your personality, but um, it seems to be water off a duck's back for you. Um, I brought this up to the nine to five boys mm. about the Blake Hargraves video. Yes. So he copped a fair bit of um pretty disgraceful abuse Terrible. and it was shared around on tiktok mm-hmm. and all the boys were sort of getting around him um do you cop any of that sort of stuff and and what's your sort of response to to blake copying uh, or just anyone any yeah. influencer putting themselves out there copying that sort of abuse on the footy field it's sad it's really sad like that people f- it, australians have this weird tall poppy um syndrome kind of culture if you know yeah. what tall poppy is it's mean yeah. like you're kind of trying to cut down someone if they're doing well yeah it's very different to America. Like in America, it's like bring everyone up kind of thing. Here, it's very different. It's like kind of if someone's starting to do well, cut them down, you know, bring them back grounded. I'm the opposite. I'm like bring people up, you know, make people shoot for the stars um, kind of thing. So, mate, it's sad that people 
feel the need to, to say those disgraceful things. A little bit of banter is fine. Like, I'm happy for a little bit of banter. But when it mm. goes over the line, you, uh, some of the slurs were, I'm not going to repeat them, obviously, but they were just over the line. So I think if you're at the footy, like, slurring people, just keep it within the margins, mate. Like, it doesn't need to be too too much. And like I said, they're probably the same blokes that are going up to him after saying, love your stuff, mate. Well, Take a photo. They're the blokes watching because they know who yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. So. Mate, you know who I am. I have no idea who you are. Like, yeah. What are you saying, bro? Like, I've never met you. Like, you know who I am. So, whatever. It's it's good, mate. Uh, yeah, I, I love it. Um, you missed the first two weeks for the Noosa Tigers yeah. because there was a bit of an incident while you were playing in the Northern Territory <laughs> over the summer. So, um, if you're not familiar with Prime Train, which I assume you are, I'm sure you would be familiar with the article that came out throughout the summer of local footballer has beer on ground. Uh, you got suspended for two weeks. Mm. Uh, can you talk us through the sort of backlash or maybe some of the um, yeah some of the noise that came from that article and from the suspension and just talk us through how it all unfolded, the beer during the footy game? Mate, it's an interesting one. So we, we were getting flogged. It was last quarter, last game of the year. Just decide to... There's a few blokes running out trying to give me a beer and the, you know, this guy runs out to the field last five minutes of the game, gives me a beer and I'll have a sip of it. And it got caught on camera and then it got circulated around social media and um, became a little bit of an internet sensation for a few weeks there. It was, a, um, it was an innocent sip as well. It wasn't like a very, full chug oh. or it wasn't even like a, you know, a shooey middle of the game. It was like the guy <laughs> ran up, you sort of had a sip and then sort of pushed him away. Oh, and mate, <laughs> the, biggest back, the, the biggest backlash was you didn't scull it, you yeah, bloody, yeah, you're not yeah, <laughs> drink yeah. up, mate. Um, the, the, it was crazy, and when when I got like when I got suspended, everyone was like, "This is terrible." You know, this is an Australian mm. icon. This is awesome. Like, we really love this sort of yeah. stuff. So, it, the if anything, it was kind of people were a bit wondering if I took myself really seriously, and I think that kind of just showed people that I'm just you know a guy trying to have fun with my footy. So it, it was actually a really good response. Um, when the suspension got handed down, how did you feel about that? So two weeks, you're not allowed to play in any competition. Yeah, it went straight to the tribunal, so I couldn't really like <laughs> argue my case with too many people, and my um, my representative probably didn't give do me any favors. He said, "Just take it, mate." <laughs> I said, "Mate, you're gonna look after me here." He said, "Nah, just take it. Take the two weeks." I'm like, bloody hell, mate! I haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. Um, I thought, but yeah, apparently it brought the game into disrepute. <laughs> so, um, look, mate, I'm I'm all for it. I'll go back up there and play with the same club this year. Yeah. Um, you know, or you know, next year. So, yeah, I love the competition. It's it's fantastic fun, and yeah, definitely something I'll be doing again. Mate, that's unreal. It's a funny story. That, yeah, it was <laughs> one for the grandkids. It was a classic because, um, like, I'd followed you for a little bit on social media by mm. then, and all of a sudden, I'm just scrolling through Facebook and it's just article after Every, article yeah. after article, and there's it's on Fox Footy and it's on it, it was everywhere. Yeah. Local footballer drinks a beer, and I was like, oh god, this is this is a bit hectic. It just blew up really quickly, yeah. So it was it was good, and, and it definitely got my name out there, prime train kind of thing. So for sure, and yeah, it solidified me as a bit of a larrikin, and you know, yeah. just a just a bloke. So yeah. it definitely earned me some fans. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> um, I want to ask about your footballing journey. So we're about to wrap up the chat, yeah, cool. but just towards the end, I want to ask about. So you played very high level football in your juniors, and you played very high level football mm. well, up until now. But even the last couple of years, you're playing in the Neefel and whatnot. So mm. I want to ask about your football uh, journey from like juniors to now. Yeah, so and sort of how I want to know how close you were to the big time, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I did get really, really close last year. So I was playing. Um, you know, I've, I've I've played school footy in Western Australia, and then you know I've played a little bit. Went through kind of like the Gold Coast Academy um, when I moved back to Queensland. And then did a few different things, NEFL, um, Waffle, and then a um, bit of VFL as well last year. And then uh, got VFL got caught, got cut short last year with, with COVID and everything. So I played half the games and the Lions um, kind of came up to me a little bit at the end of last year. Like, you know, we really love your stuff. You know, we want to, you know, want to give you a... Um, you know, give you a spot or give give you a chance. Do some interviews. Mm. So we did some interviews with um, with with the club, um, and um, yeah, towards the towards the the business end of the chats, it was the same time that prime training started to blow up, and there was a few videos that they did it and um, probably didn't agree with too much. So uh, <laughs> they said, "Sorry, we don't want to like we don't think you'd be a good fit with your like social following." For the, oh, really? Yeah. So that's no word of a lie, dead set true story, and. Um, and that was a bit like for me, I was like, oh, that's that's a bit of shame. But at the end of the day, it was, um, yeah, I've got like the emails and everything. We're never going to release. But uh, yeah, that was that was for me, I was like, oh, that's a bit sad. Like, But I think it's tough 
like we talk about the Jack Ginevan stuff, mm. we, who we love, massive fan yeah. of the potty, massive fan, like I love him. I love his personality, but sometimes it gets shunned a bit. Like people don't want to show, I'm all for it. Show your personality, live your life. Like I, I, I support it and I think you do as well. Um, so when they sort of decided to not go with you, did that sort of make your decision going forward a little bit easier? Because it's like oh, you're, you're trying to do footy, you're trying to do a bit of socials, yeah. you think you're close in both. Mm. And then when they make that decision for you, it's like, oh, sweet, I know what I'm going to do now. Yeah, 100%. And I was like, I just, you know, I love footy, you know, so much, but I, I wrapped it up and I was like, this prime training stuff was just really at the start. Kind of was starting to, you know, snowball a little bit and some of the people that I was meeting, I was like, you know, this is really cool. So I put 100% effort into that and I still love my footy. I still play um, you know, with the same gusto that I always have. Uh, but like, like I said, I, 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 yeah, I think I've chosen what my life is now and, and I'm enjoying it so much. Like uh, people that I get to meet, the things I get to do right now, like mm. I'm so grateful. This week in Melbourne has been fantastic. So I'm very, very lucky.